I've been wanting to do this project for a while. And what it is basically is something that works similar to a domino or a biscuit joiner, except instead it uses dowels. And I actually bought the cordless trim router with this project in mind. I consider this to be a prototype, just something that I can build quickly and try it out, see if I like it, and then maybe build a refined version down the road. So I'm just gonna be using scraps, so I'll pick out a few and start cutting out the parts. Well, as you can see, I've jumped ahead to assembly and what I'm building here is a box to go around the body of the router. I think that this is gonna be the simplest way to construct this, so that's what I'm doing. And what I'm doing now is I'm taking the top off, which is the quarter inch plywood, and I'm gonna double side tape a piece of inner tube rubber to the inside so that that will actually put some pressure on the router body and hold it in place. Now it's back to the table saw again to cut a dado into each one of the rails. And this is the fit on the body that I just put together. I left the bottom piece of half inch plywood sticking out about a quarter inch. And these will fit on there perfectly if I cut them correctly. Now this could probably work without a spring, but it would be handy to have the thing come back after you plunge it in. However, I don't have any compression springs. All I got are tension springs or this type here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch it well beyond its capacity and that will turn it into a compression spring. I need to make a couple of clearance cuts in the bottom that I screwed onto the tracks and I could have done this on the bandsaw. But I thought it would be a good opportunity to use the drill press with my big hole saw. And I had to slow this way down to do this. And this is the belt slipping, so I'm going to try to tighten that up and see if that makes an improvement. Next I need a place to mount that spring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the rails off and cut it so that I'll make a place in there for the spring to go. And then I'm going to drill a half inch hole so that I can put a half inch dowel in there and the spring will go around that. And the idea with the uh, dowel is so that the spring will compress without uh, bending to the side and that way it will actually work as opposed to not working. The spring needs something to push against and this piece of half inch plywood will do that. I drill out the hole just a little bit bigger than a half inch so the dowel would fit right through but the spring wouldn't go right through. And with the spring in place to keep the whole thing together, I'm going to put a washer on the end of the dowel with a single screw to hold that on.
With that done, I can get started on the fence. And for that, I need another piece of three quarter inch plywood. So I'm back to the scrap wood closet to look for that. This is the vertical part of the fence, so it needs a hole in the middle, and then I'll cut out the rest on a table saw to create a slot that's surrounded on the bottom. This is to clear the collet of the router as it plunges in. And also along both sides, I need a shallow groove. And this is for the heads of the screws that will adjust the fence. And then each groove gets a slot as well for the shaft of the screw. I'm going to use half inch plywood for the horizontal part of the fence. And what I'm doing right now is cutting a dado for a piece of clear plastic that will fit in there. And I'll use that as the indicator for the center of the dowel. Uh, of course, there are a bunch of ways that I could fasten this plastic to the fence and still have it so that I can adjust it because that's very important. I need to be able to dial this in. But I'm just going to use a pair of number six bolts with nuts. And then to get that adjustability, because it really doesn't have to go very far, I'm just going to make the holes in the plywood a little bit bigger. With the pointer done, I can turn my attention to how I'm going to hold this thing while I'm using it. And originally, I wasn't even thinking I needed a handle on here because I would hold it very similar to the way I hold my biscuit jointer. I mean, it's got that big handle on the top, but I generally hold it by the barrel. But this is just a little bit too fat to hold on to securely. So I'm going to try a handle. Remember, this is a prototype, so... This would be the place to figure these things out. And I'm once again going back to the closet to get more three quarter inch plywood. And this piece is actually what's left over from my old drill press table, the one I recently replaced. And it's more than big enough for what I need.
I'm gonna get a little bit fancy with the handle and round over the corners so it's not so sharp. And I'll do that on my router table. Plans for this router table, plus the lift that's inside and many other projects is available on my website. There's a link in the description. All right, so this looks and feels good. You might notice that I replaced the piece on the top as well. I really didn't like the look of that quarter inch plywood and really it's not making it that much bigger by using half inch there, so that's what I did. The last thing to make and put on is the depth stop. And like everything else on this prototype, it's gonna be adjustable with a screwdriver. And depending on how well this works, uh, if I were to make a more finished version, I would switch these things out to knobs. So with that done, the only thing left to do is to try it out and see how it works. <laughs> 